Hi, this is Cheryl back with you from Farmhouse Frugally. Today I have five vintage magnolia inspired trash to treasures. Now the first one is a beautiful little wooden horse toy, no doubt for a child, but I had seen Lisa over at our shabby life do the cutest little horse and I wanted to use that as my inspiration. So I asked my husband to separate the two horses and today I'll use one. I took my orbital sander, sanded it. I uh, filled the holes with some spackle um, putty that needed to be filled, sanded that down and then I went ahead and gave that one good coat of the Rust-Oleum chalked paint in linen white. Now I did paint both sides even though I would intend to hang this uh, on the wall um, but I went ahead and, and painted the back side just in case somebody should decide that they wanted to display it some other way. Now once this is fully dry I did plan to give it some distressing but before I distressed it, I took out some stamps that I have and some stays on ink. And these stamps are, some of them are IOD, some of them are IC Paris, uh, some of them are some scrapbooking stamps, just anything that I had that I thought would be pretty. Lisa had used her script and a few other really pretty ones. You definitely want to check hers out. It is absolutely adorable. Not only that, she did the cutest little thing on the mane and the tail. So I think it was in the last two weeks. So if you go over to Our Shabby Life, you will see um, that. And and it is definitely adorable. Now, I um, just put these here and there wherever I thought that that would be cute. And then when I was done with that, I took it outside to my garage and used my orbital sander. And I just distressed mostly the edges, but I ran over it to give it more of a uh, vintage look. I did want this to look more worn. It is really sweet, but I, I wanted it to look a little bit more antiquing. This is just some antiquing wax and water. I quickly put it in and wiped it off because this is chalk paint and I knew it would reactivate it. So um, once I did that, I took it outside and I sprayed it with a coat of poly. Then I added a few little ribbon and twine around his neck and that is it. I think he came out absolutely adorable. A little country, a little shabby, a little vintage. Um, and so that was my first one. And then the rest are all magnolia. Um, inspired and by magnolia I mean the flower not Joanna Gaines so number two is a cigar box that I got or actually my husband got at the good table at the dump last week and the label was loose and came off and I thought oh I'll save that for another project cleaned the box and um, went ahead and I gave this just one quick coat of a homemade, I would call it maybe a spring green or a celery green color that is a latex paint. Um, and um, just went ahead and covered. I left the bottom of the box natural, and then I painted the rest of the box with just that one coat. And I really just wanted to do a little vignette today that had um, the magnolia plus this spring green in it. I am not quite ready for fall. I know a lot of y'all are, but I just can't get myself there. In the next week or two, I will, but for now, I really wanna just keep <laughs> looking at the summer and the spring stuff. Now I bought this transfer on Etsy. I believe it was the Painted Purple Lady or the Purple Painted Lady. And the name of this transfer is Magnolia by Dixie Bell. It's absolutely adorable. And I just go ahead and layer that the way that I like to have that. And I like to have it a little bit hanging over the edge. And then once I was able to get that completely done i burnished it and added this sweet little butterfly it's one of the things i love so much about these transfers is that just a couple of little pieces just dresses up an item so you don't need to use the 30 40 dollars worth you just need to use one or two little pieces 
Now, I also used that antiquing wax and warm water and just sort of went around and distressed mostly the edges of this piece just to have that be a little bit more vintage and um, that was all that I did to this piece. I think that it is just so sweet. So you'll have to let me know what you think about these Magnolia um, inspired items that I put together today. Now you can hear the baby in the background. She's a little bit crappy right now. I think she just woke up. Now item number three, I have one big piece of this transfer left. So I went out to my stash of frames to see if I could find one the right size. And I only had this black one. It didn't have any glass or a back on it, but I figured I could make do. So I thought um, after I began to paint it in the same green that it might have been pretty to use a crackle finish to let some of that black show through, but I had already begun painting it, so I did not use that crackle, but this is one that I think really would have lent itself well to that. Now I did end up giving this two full coats, and um, after uh, in between time, um, while I'm waiting for the first to dry, I looked for something that I could use as a back, uh, a back, I guess, yeah, technically to this. And honestly, the IOD back of the transfer was the perfect size. So this is the beautiful Magnolia transfer that I had left. And I just went ahead and lined that up exactly with the cardboard and just use the scraper tool that they give you to transfer that onto the cardboard. Now, I liked the cardboard color because it mimicked the color in the background of um, this um, picture. So that actually worked very well. Other times I have painted... Uh, usually white behind the transfer to give you that you can paint the glass or paint you know whatever you're working on and um, then just use the tool to get that nice uh, and adhered and then go ahead and lift off the top of that now I'm um, I don't mind that there's no glass on the top of this particular piece um, but obviously this could be also under glass and then I like to just catch a little bit of a bubble and go ahead and adhere the rest of that transfer onto that and then burnish it down with that plastic that comes with it just to make sure that you get all of the edges and uh, this would have been pretty with some antiquing wax as well but I opted not to do that with this one because I like the black letters on this and then I went back to the frame and I just gave that a second coat all the way around so that I would be able to put this together um, you know I could have done a white wax on this frame there are a lot of lines on this frame that you can't really see very well um, and so a wax a dark wax or a white wax would have made that pop um, and I, I just like to, to showcase the especially in a simple frame like this those items that do pop but instead I opted to take a baby wipe and distress back some of the areas to let the black shine through. And I just used one to pull off some of the paint here and there where I wanted it to um, have the black come through. And then I used another one to just kind of clean that up because that can get a little bit cloudy um, and uh, make it look like green over black. I wanted it to look like black. And you can do that with a dry rag as well. Um, you can use a handy wiper, diaper wiper, even a wet rag, you know, whatever you have on hand. And so I like just um, pulling some of that back and showing off some of that frame. Now, once that was finished, I just went ahead and glued the um, picture right directly into it. And I could add nails or staples or anything like that. It already had a hanger on it and it is finished. I think it came out lovely. I like the way the black comes through and complements the writing on the top and the bottom of this piece. Now that brings me on to item number four. Now I actually purchased 15 baskets for $15 at a local um, auction. 
Um, this was one of them, already green, just dirty. And so I took the same green, washed the basket, took the same green, and just gave it a coat. And then once that was finished, it was almost exactly the same color, um, I took my antiquing wax and went around the outside edge. It's very kind of blonde wood and doesn't go with the vignette that I'm making. So I wanted to give that a vintage look, so I went ahead with that straight up um, antique wax and I just applied that with a small brush, just kept it on there for a few seconds and then wiped it back with a paper towel and then I did the same thing to the inside and outside of the handle. Um, and that is the look that I was going for. Just to dress this up a little bit um, to go with that um, magnolia vignette that I am working on. And um, I had a number of ideas of things that I could have done with this basket. Um, I've had it sitting on my table for a couple of weeks because I had some seed packs I thought would have been cute decoupaged on the front of it. And I had, um, you know, a drop cloth that I could have done a magnolia um, on directly. And it just had a funny shape to the side where you actually couldn't see a lot of the side. So I think that the best idea was simply to dress up this top and handle and leave the sides plain for now. Number five will go inside of it. I'll show you how they both look in a minute. This is just a simple book that I picked up for 50 cents at Goodwill. And I am just using some black chalked paint to paint over the binder to freshen it up and also to eliminate the title of the book. And then I am just taking my white linen white chalked paint in uh, Rust-Oleum chalk paint and going in over the um, gray book cover on both sides and the edges to give that um, a fresh look. The gray looks a little bit dingy, but also I like the white in the magnolia and the black in the picture frame. And since this is going to go together, I wanted to make sure that that was going to match. Now, once this is dry, I take another magnolia from that same transfer pack and um, go ahead and adhere that directly to the top. Now, um, this one didn't adhere perfectly because I didn't let my paint dry quite as um, dry as I should have. So I actually had to go over this with some, what is this called? Mod Podge. Uh, to glue that down and make sure that that wasn't going to lift. But it's actually not a bad idea anyways to seal over your transfers, either with a polyurethane or Mod Podge or something. Anyway, so that um, worked well. And once that is completely dry, then I wanted to just put a few little things on here to dress it up. And I took my little... Um, letters that I have, little stamp letters that I got, I think on Amazon. And I spelled out the word Magnolia, used my stays on ink, and um, just put that on the bottom of the book. And uh, then I took some little ribbon and dressed the little black binder a little bit. And then Lisa, um, also on her book sets, she closes them with a piece of drop cloth. She just glues it onto both interior um, covers. And I thought that was a great idea right here just to keep that closed because I have had them flop open before. So I thought that came out sweet, a little something different. And so here it is, number four and number five together, the basket and the book. And then here is the entire vignette together. You'll have to let me know which one of these items is your favorite. I am very partial to that horse. I think it is quite adorable, but I have to say um, that the whole vignette together, I think just really looks sweet. It is spring summery, you know, the feel of it. And, um, you know, I know a lot of people are doing fall, but um, I just really loved this spring green color. It's been really speaking to me this year. And since I have these magnolia transfers left over, then I thought it would be a great thing to just pull it together. 
I would like to know which one you like the best. I would love it if you would share this with a friend. It would help my channel to grow. I appreciate your stopping by. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.